recommend doing this, but whatever, we're doing it. I want to make some content. It might be a little windy, sorry if it's hard to hear. I think the headphones or the mic in my beats hopefully aren't too bad. We'll see after. Um, but it's a it's a pretty simple neighborhood. It shouldn't be that hard to, to drive around. Hopefully I don't get hit by a car. But um, yeah, I wanted, to, I wanted to make some content, dude. I, I mean, the market's not open. Can't really go live talking about the market. So I decided I just wanted to speak about whatever else is in my mind and the people that are walking are probably listening to me right now but anyway um so farzad put out a tweet today and i thought it was a really interesting tweet in terms of what he was saying about the story around tesla so his argument was like well the story on tesla has fundamentally changed and the reason that story has changed is because um because the stock is up right so tesla's up 40 percent in the past month Farzad started covering November 2021. I think Tesla was, yeah, basically like $400 at that time. And then it then it tanked. Uh, and for the past three years, basically, he's been going through a lot of shit. Farzad makes some of the best Tesla content on the entire planet. And uh, I've personally seen the shit he's gone through, uh, given the stock has, has, you know, collapsed pretty badly, but now making a recovery. And it got me thinking about Palantir and my own journey. And I kind of wanted to take the time uh, to talk about it just on this bike ride. I resonated with him because in November, 2021, I started making content about Palantir and I was buying, I actually even posted a screenshot today of me buying at $25 in October, 2021. And that was not, uh, I would say the best valuation to be buying Palantir. I'd given those macroeconomic conditions, things have changed, but I started making content about the company in November, 2021. And the content uh, started resonating with people. I wasn't the best Palantir analyst in the world, but um, there weren't a lot of us. And so there was kind of a supply demand imbalance. There was a lot of supply for Palantir content. There was very little demand specifically on YouTube. And so um, I took advantage of that by inserting myself. I already had a decent amount of the company. So I said, you know what, why don't I just start talking about the stock and talking about the company a lot more and uh, going on the journey of becoming a financial creator. And people started resonating with the content. We started building this whole community. It was great until the stock collapses to $6. And so now we're down 80%. A lot of people are down a lot of money. I was down a lot of money. And it was one of those things where it's like, wow, um, what do you do when you basically told everybody, even if it was implicitly not direct financial advice, that the stock is worth, you know, $35 if you're buying it at $25. Um, but at that moment, I barely understood what market caps were. So it was, it's been a real journey since then. And then the stock goes to $6. How do you navigate that? And people actually... I was surprised. Uh, I think when you put out content and you develop a bit of a, bit of a following, you, you forget that people actually care about your opinion if they choose to follow and subscribe and have an intimate relationship via video through you. And so people are like watching me speak and they're, you know, understanding my ideas, my arguments, which ended up, I think, given the stock has rebounded, you know, coming to fruition. But at the time, that just wasn't the case, right? So how do you navigate that situation? And my argument to Farzad, uh, given he said, you know, the, the, the sentiment is more positive right now and that's why it's exciting to be a Tesla content creator is that I 100% agree. That is correct. And he knows this just as well as I do because we both went through it. And same thing with Arnie. Um, when, when, when you're building a brand, not just randomly posting tweets, not just you know putting a video out here and there, when you're really building a brand around a stock and you know you only need one to be right. Dan Ives got Tesla right, Ross Gripper got Tesla right, Kathy, they built their entire careers. Multi-million, not, you know, Kathy at one point managed $40 billion, multi-billion dollar careers off of getting one thing right. In this game, you got to get one right before you have a chance to get others right. And so at that moment, I made a decision that was, okay, my conviction is that I think Pounder is going to win. I don't know when the hell is going to happen. I hope it happens soon, but I can't control it. And I was about 18 months of waiting for it to kind of play out. Um, but, but, but it did happen. And the biggest lesson I got and the biggest lesson I think for anyone who wants to create, I get a lot of DMs about how do I become a financial creator? How do I stop, you know, my nine to five? How do I create content? It's a much deeper subject. There's a lot to get into. There's a lot of nuance of how do you actually make this turn into an income and like, how, how does this really work? But at its core, I think the question that people have when it comes to being a finance content creator is how do I build a community and get people to actually value my thoughts and opinions? And I think quite frankly, the best way to do it, and it's circumstantial, but it is, it is the best way, is you have to be convicted in a company that has a following uh, because the company is cool enough to have a following, right? The company is interesting enough, i.e. Palantir or Tesla. You have to genuinely care about that company. And when things get tough, you have to be the voice of reason in that company. And when things got tough for Palantir at six bucks, 
some of the fundamentals did suck. I mean, growth slowed down, margins slowed down, like, like they weren't profitable. Like a lot of fundamentals sucked. But my thesis at the moment was Alex Karp is too amazing of a leader. Uh, the company has too much of a differentiated product. They are way too innovative to let this opportunity pass. The opportunity I'm talking about is AI. And I believe that they are not gonna lose that easily. And I got more convicted every time I heard Alex Karp talk. And every time I got a deal. I mean, I remember it was May, 2022. We got a deal with Truffigora. Truffigora is a company that handles the carbon emissions, tracking the carbon emissions from a supply chain within the raw materials of a product. So if, if you know, a company is building a product and they need to manage their supply chain emissions uh, in the raw materials that it takes to build that product to be more eco-friendly, et cetera, Trafigura helps them figure that stuff out. They had a partnership with Pouncer back in May and I was like, holy shit, this is really cool. Stock's like at $8. Satellogic, throwing satellites into space. They have a partnership with Palantir. Holy shit, that's pretty cool. Stock is stuck at $8. That's the first time we had a car come by. I got away for like five minutes without a car coming by. That was a car. It was a Tesla, of course. Um, I saw a Rivian in this neighborhood the other day. I was surprised. And, um, and, and then what are some other deals? Ukraine, right? Stock is flat, even though we're literally giving the software to Ukraine. Yes, there's no money in the deal, but still it's fucking like Ukraine's using our software. Like that has to be a big deal. So many things happened that deepened my conviction. And the biggest thing that I think I did now looking back on this journey and the fun thing is the journey is just getting started now, um, is I stayed. I remember one day in particular, Palantir partnered with Microsoft and the partnership was to bring Foundry to their uh, Azure marketplace. It Now looking back, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but at the moment when the stock's at $8 and you hear Palantir Microsoft, you're like, oh shit, Palantir Microsoft. That's like, we got <laughs> Palantir Microsoft. We gotta fucking talk about Palantir Microsoft. And I couldn't make the video for two days because I got busy with work. And I, I go to you know, YouTube it two days later, thinking someone else made a video and I could kind of see some of their analysis. No one made the video. And in my head, I'm like, this is the biggest news on the fucking, like, pound through Microsoft. I'm sorry, I couldn't make the video the day of, but like, that's a pretty big deal. No one made the video. And at that moment, I knew, oh, ah, people only care when the stock runs. When I mean people, I mean content creators, you know, not just the the average passive viewer because viewers aren't going to make the content it's up to the creators who want to build a brand who actually want to go through this shit of making the content there's another car we got two cars that's not too bad in six minutes seven minutes again this neighborhood really doesn't have a lot of cars it's also july 4th so there's, there's gonna be too many um so so in my head i'm like okay well wait a second so 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 when 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 the one of the biggest deals came out about microsoft no one talked about it even though we all know it's very important but no one's saying shit. And at that moment, I was just like, well, wait a second. If no one's saying shit, I wasn't upset that no one was saying shit. I was like, this is my opportunity to be the only one saying shit, which means my opinion is gonna be the one that becomes the narrative. And I think if you're a smart content creator, you see those opportunities and you recognize, wait, if my opinion is the only one that matters, given no one else is talking, so I'm just gonna get the natural algorithmic distribution, if I can somewhat know what the fuck I'm talking about, and after you do 2,000 videos, you end up having a little bit of a clue about what you're talking about. Uh, when the stock does run, eventually, if you're right, you will get all the benefit and all the praise. And I think the biggest thing here is not letting that go to your head and not be like, oh, I'm some stock guru, I get everything right, blah, blah, blah. I think I, I try to have, you know, my morning opens, I act like I'm not humble and I make my jokes and whatever, but I, I try to keep humility at the forefront of... of of what I do. I've never accepted a dollar from someone who made money off Palantir, even though many of them have tried to send money, many of them have tried to just like, you know, like if, if someone fucking makes a lot of money off Palantir and you were the guy they listened to, they did naturally want to give to you. I just, I don't, I, I am just so happy people engaged with the content because I care about attention more than anything, a little bit of an attention whore. And I care about building my brand and my brand, I want to be built on authenticity and respect and people actually caring about my thoughts and ideas about other things, not just Palantir, which means you have to fucking work your ass off. Like Leo DiCaprio makes uh, Gilbert Grapes or whatever movie he was in. Okay, cool, nice. You make Titanic, now people care. Now people care. Now they'll let you do Inception, you know? Now they'll let you do... Um, a uh, wolf of Wall Street, right? Because like, like you need to give them a reason to care, and 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 me trying to make sure I was consistent enough for people, and I didn't leave them when things sucked the most for Palantir, was me trying to say, hey, you should care about me for the long term, and hopefully I get this right. And then it's just the Peter Thiel version of being right. You have to be contrarian and right. It was contrarian to invest in Palantir at seven bucks, but if you were right, you ended up winning, 
And uh, that's what happens with generational companies. I think the same thing here is happening with Tesla. From a content creating perspective, it's all about can you be there when no one else is there? Because although other people may get more views than you, a lot of those views are fucking empty because they're all just views by passive viewers. You could get 1,000 views versus 10,000 views, those 1,000 people that actually care about you when the stock's at six bucks versus the 100,000 people that watch you when the stock's at 50 bucks. That matters. Those 1,000 people, now I would have those 1,000 people any day of the week. And I think it's important to recognize that if you're gonna get into this game and you're gonna try to do uh, you know, financial content creation. So we've got a long journey. We'll see what happens. And it's been a fun ride, obviously. Uh, been able to take it to, to different heights with with getting to meet Alex Carp and actually be at the company events and I really think they're just getting started and that doesn't mean they're not going to have hiccups along the way. I mean, think about Tesla. It got to a trillion and fell all the way back down to what, 400 billion market cap? Like, it got hit over the past couple of years. Macro, anything could happen but being there when things do happen I think is the most important thing. So, that's it for me. Happy July 4th. Hopefully people enjoy it. I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, guys, what's up? Happy July 4th. I am outside an establishment that sells donuts and that runs on dunking those donuts inside sometimes a ice latte. I would never put a donut in a latte, but there are people who put fries in their milkshakes like at, 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 a, at restaurants. Like, no, dude, like, no, you don't put a fry in a milkshake. Anyway, uh, I'm sitting here drinking this caramel ice latte in America and uh, just wanted to make this quick video I am so grateful to be an American and there was a time in my life when I was in high school and I was consuming content that was more America's the worst in the world, America's bad, America's XYZ. And although America has issues, like every country has issues, the older I get and the more I realize how hard it is to build something, whether that's a brand, a business, uh, an idea that you take from scratch. I realized that there's not that many places in the world that give you the freedom to try to build what you're trying to build, the opportunity to build what you want to build, and quite frankly, the support to build what you want to build. In America, if you fail, and I have failed at many things in this country, no one cares. People want you to try again. You'll have resources to try again. People will be happy that you even tried because the reason you get the Apple, Nvidia, Microsoft, Google, Facebooks of the world is because those founders didn't care what people thought because they were in a culture in America that gave them the privilege to not have to give a shit about how their government's gonna treat them, about how their friends are gonna think about them if they fail. They just went and they tried. And that culture is so unique. And as a founder and entrepreneur that has tried various different things, that is you know, engaged in business, that, 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 that is an investor, so I understand if I invest in a company how hard it is for that company ultimately to win at the end of the day. Like, like, and, and then that affects my capital. And so that, that company needs an environment to be able to win, to have a chance to win. And America is the greatest environment in the world for people to have a chance. So uh, I, I am just so un, uh, unequivocally grateful to be an American. And it's days like this where I remember uh, you, you, people, people, people died for me to have the freedom of speech, the freedom of religion, the freedom to believe. Like if I want to say, I don't like XYZ political candidate, I don't get my head chopped off for saying that. And that doesn't exist in the far majority of the world. The far majority of the world, you are forced to believe what a totalitarian authoritarian regime wants you to believe. That's not America. That's, just, that's not America. America is one of the greatest ideas in the history of ideas because the idea is a sovereign individual has the potential to actually think for themselves. Whether you're in Alabama or New York City, your vote counts because the idea is you are a individual who has value and who deserves to vote in a democracy, in, in an election, in a, in a world in which your, your ideas actually can impact the material reality of your life based on the candidate that gets elected. That's all based on this philosophical concept that you as an individual are sovereign and no one can destroy the sovereignty of the individual. As I grow older, that to me, and I've explored philosophy and, and business for you know the past, I would say seven, eight years now, that idea out of everything I have explored is the greatest idea that you can be your own individual because that has given birth to all the other individuals that because they wanted to be their own individual, they went out and they chased their dreams. They made their own YouTube channel. They built their own multi-billion dollar tech company because they felt their ideas mattered. And because their ideas mattered, 
they actually felt the courage to go try to pursue those ideas because hundreds of years ago, people had the courage to die for them to fight for their ideas. Very proud to be an American. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys have a great July 4th. And yeah, anyone who puts their fries in their milkshakes, even if it's in America, I, I think that's un-American. All right, bye. Love you guys.